Good morning, everybody, and welcome to Wake Up Missoula. I'm your host, Scott Ramph, and I'm here to tell you all sorts of wonderful things that are happening in and around the Missoula area. We got events, we got dubbing stuff, we got guests from the Missoula Agent Service talking about a free diabetes class that is coming here, that is uh, coming up in October. But we also have um, some news items and some other items that we're going to get to right now. So let's talk about some of the weather. It's looking pretty nice out there. There's going to be some fog and um, some sun today. Um, we're kicking it off with a 39 degree temperature outside. Your high is going to be 68. So things are going to start warming up towards the end of this week. And then by Saturday, you can expect 80% chances of showers happening for your Saturday. So if you guys are planning on being out and about, Thursday and Friday might be those days for you for some nice high temperatures into the 70s. And then... Um, People are already saying that the uh, temperatures outside are going to be uh, are good in, in terms of helping fight the Lolo Peak fire. And uh, so currently, um, let's talk about some news items that are happening locally. Lolo Peak fire, uh, the total personnel is uh, at 170 people. The size is at 53,902 acres. Um, it never shrinks. It usually just grows until containment. It's 90% containment. And uh, the estimated containment date officially is October 31st at... Um, 12 a.m. So San, um, Sam Gibbon, Line Operations sh Section Chief, uh, gives you a little bit of an update. I'm going to show you a little bit of the clip. And I, th I believe that they've been um, posting a couple clips here and there. They have uh, some clips from the Rice Ridge Fire update and as well. That's 33 minutes long. Didn't get a chance to watch it. But if you guys get a chance, you can go look it up at, at their Facebook page, Lolo National Forest. So here's Sam Gibbons. Finish. Uh also, we're, uh, we've got the road grader, has been doing, uh, fixing some roads in there that we've been using over the course of uh, five teams, and so uh, they've been doing that work. Also fixing some fence that uh, was damaged during suppression and the fire. Um, and so that work is also going to be ongoing uh, today and probably for the next couple, two or three shifts, and we should be pretty well looking good on this uh, um, uh, eastern face there. So. Coming around the fire over here to Division Alpha, uh, up in the Brushy Fork, uh, we completed a section of line up here that comes down into Brushy Fork, uh, repaired that, repaired some stuff over in here, and we're working up this dozer line up here, it's a snowmobile trail actually. Um, and so that, that work is ongoing today, was uh, work that we accomplished yesterday as well. All right, so uh, that was, uh Sam um, Gibbons, uh, he is the, um, once again, he is the uh, line operations section chief for the uh, Lolo Peak Fire. Um, a lot of times of what some of the people have been saying is that a lot of them will be dispersing over the next couple of days as long as the next couple of weeks. But of course, full suppression is the strategy used in all parts of the perimeter where high value resources are threatened. This includes the west, north, east side of the fire. The southern portion of the perimeter, which does not threaten private land, will be managed with a uh, confined strategy using natural barriers, constructed fire line, retardant, and water drops. A large part of this portion uh, of the perimeter is this um, Selway Bitterroot Wilderness. The ratio between strategies will be calculated uh, based on perimeter progress uh, progression. The amount of contained um, fire perimeter will be calculated accordingly. There is no evacuation orders or um, evacuation warnings at this time. A unified con command was dissolved on September 18th. Suppression repair progress and speed will depend on log loading uh, loader ab availability as well. So they did a flyover with the uh, um, infrared radar. The fire hasn't grown. It seems like it's been um, contained. Um, just because that they you see some snow on the mound doesn't mean that there is some smoldering fires as well. Uh, a lot of the fire is not as visible, but a lot of the damage is definitely visible uh, from the Little Oak Peak fire. So um, let's talk about what's happening um, here. Uh, the University of Montana wrapped up all their candidates for University of Montana presidents with um, Chuck M. Ambrose. He um, he's the president uh, president of the University of Central Missouri. He visited the campus for interviews uh, September 25th and 26th, and it is his uh, first time here in uh, Montana. So uh, here is a little clip from his uh, um, Q&A section of the public forum that was held this past Monday. Uh, we're all becoming more enrollment driven and having experience in the private sector and now a public sector that's becoming more enrollment driven, I do believe I could bring some things here that I hope would contribute positively to, to the campus. Um, I'd be confessional uh, if I didn't say my wife and I uh, love uh, the communities that we serve 
and to serve one that has a real heart for the outdoors and, and uh, the kind of environment you present here in Missoula uh, makes place a, a real attractive place to consider. But again, I'll be confessional. This is our first trip ever to Montana. <laughs> so uh, we wanted to come take a look. But it's been a very earnest conversation that we very much appreciate. Uh, I've approached this like uh, I mentioned, being a prospective student. Uh, and I tell students all the time, if you can see yourself here, if you feel like it's a place that you fit and, and you can engage, most likely you'll be successful. Now, I know fit's reciprocal. So you need to take a look at us and, and, and see if that fit goes both directions. And if it does, I, I would hope that would create an environment where we could do some pretty incredible things. All right, so that was uh, Chuck Ambrose, and he was uh, running for UN president. Today is the day when uh, Board of Regents um, and other officials from the university will come together and actually look at some of these candidates and just kind of uh, talk about them a little bit more. Um, hopefully, they'll take a little more time in terms of finding out somebody who fits just well, but they really want to move this quite along from what I hear um, in terms of finding a, re a good replacement for Royce Engstrom, um, interim um, President St uh, Sheila Stearns will, uh, I assume, resume, resume her duties um, from her job beforehand, which I, at this time, I can't think of. Um, let's talk about another news items that's happening um, also from the University of Montana, but in terms of back. Um, so basically, in early September, Missoula Attorney David uh, Palo, who represented uh, um, former University of Montana quarterback Jordan Johnson d during the 2013 rape trial that saw Jordan Johnson acquitted, filed a pair of motions in Lewis and Clark County District Court asking for a judge to force Krakauer to turn over any documents he already uh, possesses and reveal their sources. John Krakauer, who wrote the infamous novel Missoula Rape and the Justice System in a college town, asked the university for all records regarding Johnson and other uh, folks who were accused of rapes um, in the last couple, in, in, the, in, in its years, um, citing that the university is a public education facility and should have public records on such high profile crimes. In the court motion er, uh, motions earlier this month, uh, pay, uh, Palo, Palo, I'm sorry, I'm just like butchering that name, um, said that the I said in an interview, Cracker has repeatedly claimed to have records and documents that he himself has stated he shouldn't possess with, uh, now, with him claiming that these records, which he believes are about his client, were obtained improperly or illegally. Helen attorney Mike Malloy, who represents Krakauer, said that the documents the author has about Johnson were either released by the federal court or as part of the U.S. Department of Justice investigation report. Any allegations on the contrary by intervener uh, are based in pure spe uh, suspicion and speculation, both of which have been discredited by Krakauer's sworn testimony. So that's kind of what's happening um, in and around uh, Montana. Of course, in the national news, um, Donald Trump is, you know, asking that the NFL uh, players who kneel during the national anthem be fired. And uh, that's pretty much all I'm going to say about that. Um, up next, we have Alicia Crandall, um, Missoula Agent Service Co um, Education Coordinator, and Kelly Moore from MSU Extension's office. Um, they're, t they're here from the Missoula Agent Services, and they're uh, talking about a free diabetes class is to help with healthy decision making, and it's happening on October 31st. I have an art clip for you guys, which is going to transition into my interview with them. So uh, here is a brand new art clip um, being featured at the Missoula Monsters Project at the Zootown Arts Community Center. <laughs>
Hey guys, welcome back. We are here with uh, Kelly Moore and Alicia Crandall, and they are here with uh, MSU Extensions, and uh, let me just adjust this just a little bit. It's a little loud, um, but uh, they're here uh, with Missoula Agent Services, and they're talking about a free diabetes uh, class uh, education, um, but you guys have a little more to say about it than I just did. Yeah. So um, let's talk about a little about, about Missoula Agent Services. Sure. Missoula Aging Services promotes the independence, dignity, and health of older adults and those that care for them. And that's why our um, class, it's called Deep Diabetes Empowerment Education Program, is so close to our hearts. It's a free class for people age, well, it's, it's geared for Medicare recipients who are 65 or older, diagnosed with um, prediabetes or diabetes. With that said, we welcome anyone with that diagnosis of any age and their caregivers. And this is um, developed with uh, Mountain Pacific Quality Health, and it, they receive some grant money. And uh, we just welcome anybody. We uh, focus on pre-diabetes. Uh, it's all about self-care and, um, and good management. We um, have just a fun time here, just using different uh, methods to teach by. We have games. We have some... Um, uh, things that we make in class to help you understand more about how diabetes works. And uh, we talk about nutrition, that sort of thing. And, and Scott, this is a free class. Kelly is our wonderful facilitator. Um, what I have sought through her class and what I like about it, it gives people the opportunity to connect and share their stories mm. if they've had the diagnosis. It's very fun, and Kelly brings in several professionals from the community that have expertise on the topic of diabetes to meet um, the participants. Currently, we have four spots available. Wow. So if people are interested, they should either call Missoula Aging Services or get online to register. And the online website is MissoulaAgingServices.org? It is. Yeah. Great. And they could also call the call center. The phone number for our call center is 406 728-7682. Nope. And this isn't your first uh, uh, rodeo, right Kelly? Right, this is our second class. It's kind of a new series of classes. So uh, yeah, so each time we uh, bring in some new professionals, we've uh, had some diabetes education um, professionals and some pharmacy students. And so it's really a fun way to get to know some other people in the community. And we're not there to replace any diabetes education program. Uh, there are many good ones out there, so it's just another option. And it's also free, and you also said that you got mm -hmm. a big grant as well so to make it available for people. Right. And this is available to people across the state of Montana. So. Okay. It is. And a good way to remember, we're starting off this class series on Halloween, mm -hmm. which is Tuesday, October 31st, from 1 to 2.30 at the MSU Extension Office, which is right, it's, it's be it's basically Albertsons. between um, the, the, the block side of Albertsons mm -hmm. and you just take a right on Santa Fe Drive exactly. and you go down there yep. and Over it's a little cul-de-sac <laughs> and in the cul-de-sac area so, there's a building. Yeah. In, in Missoula County Extension Office mm -hmm. is where what it's is at. What is the address so, at MSU? Uh, that's 2825 Santa Fe Court. Okay. And what time does it happen on, um, on Halloween? It's at 1 o'clock. 1 o'clock? In the afternoon, yes. Okay. yes. Wow. So you guys have plenty of time in advance to uh, sign up for this meeting as well. There's only four spots available, but this is gonna be, uh, this is a fairly new class, but also it's gonna be uh, providing people a gathering experience for people who have diabetes. Mm -hmm. yeah. You got it. So uh, let's, um, I mean, there's a lot happening. There's, like Missoula Agent Services does a lot. There's always a bunch happening. Mm -hmm. and I just wanna give a shout out that this week is also Active Agent Week. Yeah, it is. And it's just the middle of it. It's yes, the, um, tonight is the hip hop class as well. We have the um, hip hop um, At two o'clock this afternoon today, what is today? It's Wednesday. Wednesday, September 27th. Mm -hmm. There's a matinee called Hip Hop Oration. And we're also doing an ULA demonstration. And then tomorrow, Senior Corps will be tabling for volunteer events at the library. Cool. And um, Missoula Agent Service is always looking for volunteers to help out with uh, all sorts of programs we are, as well. Yeah. And we are actually looking for a volunteer to work with Kelly with oh. the deep class too. If someone has an interest and a passion in that topic, they could call me and, and inquire about that. Okay, cool. So um, one more time, let's bring it back to uh, the di di uh, diabetes class that's happening on Halloween at 1 p.m. in the Santa Fe MSU Extensions, and just like all the information. Um, 
what can people um, like hope to gain from this class? Well, I think it's just the, uh, the goal of our class is to uh, teach people some good self-management uh, skills, which they, they have already, but just to kind of enhance those. Um, could be their caregivers as well or family members if they're interested. We talk about uh, good foot care, um, eye care. There's a lot of things that are involved in uh, you know, having a better, uh, better ability to recognize um, the parts of diabetes. They may also walk away with some recipes. Yes. And some ideas mm -hmm. and get to try some really delicious fresh fresh food. Kelly is really an advocate for healthy eating and nutrition. Cool. So, yeah. All right. Uh, is there anything else you guys want to say? I just hope you'll give us a call. And, and my number is 258-4206 if you want to call the Missoula County Extension Office or Aging Services. So yeah. mm -hmm. hope to see you there. All right, guys. There's only four spots available. And the class is on Halloween, which is Tuesday in the afternoon at the MSU Extension offices on Santa Fe Drive. So um, thanks for joining me, guys. I really appreciate it. Um, Mizzou Asian Service, always welcome to come down here anytime to talk about any events that are, you guys are doing as well. And thank you, Kelly, for joining us as thank well. Thank you. Very nice to be here. And we'll be back right back right after a bunch of new programs here on MCAT. The Arnold Feeney Wedding. Um, and I realized later that it's full of all sorts of uh, imagery that I didn't realize at the time. Everything in there is, is it references something and, and uh, usually uh, religious. Uh, for instance, the sandals on the side are, are supposed to represent that they're, that they're in, a, in a holy place, uh, they're taking their shoes off. The dog, uh, it, I, I found out later, represents fidelity. Um, and that's where the word, I just, when I was preparing for this, I, I looking around, that's where the word, apparently where the word Fido comes from. Yeah. <laughs> oh, so great. that's just sort of a little I've aside. I've never heard that. Um, anyway, I was just, I was drawn by the fact that you can see that the window is open and there's probably buildings behind the window, but it's so, it's such a narrow angle. It's like, how did he do that? Mm -hmm. And then the most, the most intricate part is the mirror behind. <laughs> Well, hello everyone. I'm Joel Beard, the General Manager of Missoula Community Access Television. Welcome to the second edition of Missoula Out and About. I'm at the Zoo Town Arts Community Center with uh, the Executive Director, Kia Lizak. Kia, thanks for having us over to your place. Absolutely. Thanks for stopping by. Hey man, you know it. Um, Kia has uh, been putting together a fantastic array of things to do at the Zach Community Center. One of these fantastic things is the Monster Show. What is it about? Um, around here we call it Monster Christmas. Uh, really, its official name is the Missoula Monster Project. So this is an annual art show here at the Zach. Um, what we do is we try to capture every kindergartner in Missoula, but we don't have enough space to do them all at once. So we do three different schools each year. You have to respond as a community, either through the commissioner's office or in some other way as a community, because it is not going to go away and it is going to get bigger if you don't. And that is the insight, as simple as it is, that I will give you after three and a half years at the commissioner's office and after working on 190 cases, including a dozen cases that directly concerned the 2010 primary, Republican primary election races involving nine candidates, and now we have three involving the corporate entities that were involved in those candidates. What happens if we don't respond as a community? I felt like my body, which I use every day for work, I felt like my body had betrayed me, and I felt like my body had betrayed my baby. And I didn't know what to do with this because people don't really talk about it because it's a very uncomfortable thing to talk about. But I didn't know what else to do but to share in in, in my emotions and my situation. And so I began talking about it on social media and I began dancing to my pain. So what started as a fun workout class and dancing and having a, a great time, well, then I began to introduce sad songs. And I began dancing to to these sad songs and, and I remember the first few months after it happened 
I could go an entire song without saying a word, without even looking up, just allowing myself to cry with a class behind me. And when I finally looked up, I noticed that people were crying with me. And they weren't necessarily crying for me or for my story. Some of them were. But what I realized is that my sadness and my pain created a beautiful space for other people to heal. Hey guys, welcome back. And um, I just want you guys to know that that program is the Last Best Conference, and it's one of many other um, um, videos that MCAT allows, or I want to—I want to I, I choose the right words collect, uh, correctly. It's basically I want to say that anybody who's out there who's interested in making a uh, videos or having MCAT shoot videos for you guys, you can go to MCAT.org. MCAT.org is a great resource for anybody to uh, basically go on our website, go to How Do I Request Event Recording, or if you already have a program, you can submit a program to us as well. Um, the, the only sp um, thing that we uh, require is that you must be a Missoula resident, but we also take some imports from outside sources as well that we run on our channel 189, um, but we also put it on our video on demand channel on MCAT.org, so any of these programs that you just saw is something that you could watch anytime on video on demand. So uh, look before you speak. It's a program that I produce. They got uh, Out and About with Joel Baird, a, a program that he produces here. And of course, you got the Last Best Conference, which is an ongoing um, uh, short videos that will be going on, I think, for another week or two. So you guys got to check that out. Uh, but also, MCAT is going to be filming all the lecture series that are coming up this year through the University of Montana, since University of Montana hosts a lot of lecture series, which MCAT will be doing as well. All right, so University of Montana uh, hosted an uh, interesting event the other day, and I definitely uh, took part of it. Um, it is a total random, um, interesting event. It's a, um, I think it's it's n it's like how you know you pr you get a community together, and it's the idea of uh, having a, a flash mob, but it's more of like a uh, a gathering event on a certain idea, which includes which in this case on Monday it was um, basically shouting at each other, uh, claiming that. I'm Dirty Dan, and if you don't know that reference, it's a reference to an old cartoon called SpongeBob SquarePants. Back in 2003, 2004, uh, there was an episode where uh, SpongeBob SquarePants and his um, his buddy, who is a, a starfish, Patrick Star, would yell, "I'm Dirty Dan." And uh, here is a video I got from the Oval about a bunch of us, including myself, yelling, "I'm Dirty Dan," and you will recognize me, obviously. So, without further ado, here's that. I'm dirty. I'd say I'm Look at this! Look at this hat! I'm the dirtiest of all the Dan's! Dirty Dan! Dirty Dan! Who are you calling? I'm Dirty Dan! Who are you calling? I'm Dirty Dan! Dirty Dan! I'm the real Dirty Dan. Look at this hat. I came prepared. All right, so that that's as much as I'm going to show. Um, and that was an event that basically lasted off the Oval from 12.50 to 1 o'clock. A lot more people gathered around and started chanting Dirty Dan over and over again. But it was a nice little fun event that we all kind of took apart. And um, just letting you guys know that um, the same guy who put the event together is also going to be putting on an event that is happening um, next Monday, which is basically... Uh, power up like Goku, so it's more of a, like a cheesy cartoon references from a lot of people's childhoods where they run around and basically just do things. Uh, it's uh, it's what a lot of people have been doing. Um, there was another uh, uh, event that was online as well, which is called um, Steal the uh, Water from the Minnesota Lakes, and that was another, just a lot of like random events, and whether or not people show up, it's great, and people did show up for this thing, people did hear about it, and people were able to basically yell at each other, s shouting, I'm Dirty Dan, over and over again. It's uh, basically, I don't know, like it's kind of uh, it's pretty stupid, but it's stupid awesome. That's what I like to refer to us. So anyways, uh, I do have a new dub and stuff, and when we come back, we'll talk about events. Um, city Council was a really short meeting, and there wasn't much to talk about, um, but I'm just going to skip over that, and I'm going to show you um, some dub and stuff, and when we come back, we'll talk about some events that are happening inside Missoula. Mm, mm, mm. It's getting a little hot in here. Ah. Oh, thank God the peacocks are still there. Whew, that was a close one. Mm. The, last the last time, time quote, 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 quote
<laughs> Can I borrow your car? I promise I'll bring it back. My name is Derek. Get it? Derek, not Shirley. So myself, a minister and a rabbi, walk into a bar. Please. Let's just say that people are anti-Semitic and leave it at that. Bad news about the car, bro. I think I crashed it. No, officer, I wasn't drinking. No! Oh, jeez. Oh. Oh no, please, please be there, please be there, please be there, please, 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 please. Oh, no, no, gotta go. Oh, no, please, no. Come on, please, please be there, please be there. Oh. oh. That's one big sigh of relief. I think people are just jealous of me. They just don't understand me. Man, do I got a bone to pick with you. When does a skeleton laugh? When somebody tickles his funny bone. What do you do if you see a skeleton running across the road? Jump out of your skin and join him. <laughs> wait, wait, come back. Oh, psh, whatever, you're just missing out. Oh geez, I cut my hand. Um, his jokes weren't that sharp. What kind of soup does a skeleton like? The kind with a lot of body in it. <laughs> no, no, oh, okay. I got a, I got a bunch of them still. Hey, hey, are you there, dude? I'm sorry about your car. Uh, I'm about to get a couple hundred dollars from my dad, so I, I can give it to you if you don't mind. <laughs> Did I tell you about all the other bony jokes that I have? <laughs> Heads are gonna roll when they hear my jokes. <laughs> and then, uh, and then the other jokes, uh, you know, like with all the other things that are happening. You know, like, you know, <laughs> you know, you can play xylophone with my rib cage. <laughs> it's quite a musical. It's quite, it's quite hilarious. Oh, you here for more? Shut up! <laughs> Those are dark peacocks. Ah, can't stand this. <laughs> I guess you'll never stay ahead of the game. <laughs> oh, wait, no, no, I got, I got better jokes. Oh. Never <laughs> hurt anyone ever again. Ugh. <laughs> Oh, come on, don't be that way. Alright, let's talk about events, because we will not, never talk about that video ever again. Um, moving on. <laughs> so, um, here's what's happening in and around the city of Missoula in terms of just events, things that you guys can do. Uh, Missoula Senior, uh, Senior Center is hosting a Tai Chi this morning. It's $4 fee, uh, and it's charged to help cover the cost of the instructor. And Missoula Senior Center has a whole bunch of other things that happen there as well. They have uh, African drum dance lessons. Um, they also have uh, bridge and cribbage groups and all sorts of things in the Missoula Agency for Services, including their uh, thrift shop in their basement. Um, Science Sprout Fall Colors. Uh, fall is in the air, and... Uh, Science uh, Spectrum Discovery Center is hosting a fall shine sprout sh uh, um, education thing about uh, fall colors and why leaves change colors in the first place. So they'll be doing this, and this is their Tool Avenue address, 812 Tool Avenue. You can do playful science experiments and crafts while you learn together. The cost is 350 per person, aged one and older, um, and includes museum admission. Members receive a 10% discount. Discounted punch passes are available. Um, Facebook, uh, Missoula Public Library, if, if you have nothing, no idea uh, how, how to use Facebook or how to work Facebook, um, fa learn how to set up an account and how to use basic features. This class is for those who don't have an account or are new to Facebook. Um, reservation is required by calling 721-BOOK, otherwise known as 721 Two six six five, and it's at twelve thirty in the computers classroom. Um, it's Active Asian Week, and as we heard from um, Alicia Crandall as well, it's a hip hop oration. Um, Missoula Public Library hosts. Uh, it's part of Active Asia Week. Is their afternoon and matinees movie this week is the documentary movie Hip Hop Oration, which screens in the large meeting room. After the film, local ULA instructor Kelly Cabello Cabello uh, will engage the audience with simple. Uh, sample exercises, and this is going to go on from 2 to 4 p.m. Um, hike for the places that we love. Waterworks Hill uh, celebrates the return of hiker family weather by joining Environment Montana and your neighborhood for a hike for the places that we love. Um, public lands are under threat by climate change. Snowpack is reduced. Stream flows um, are lessened, and our wildlife is experiencing habitat loss, and wildfire seasons are getting longer and more severe. The greatest line of defense against these threats are EPA's climate change programs, 
um, which must be fully funded in order to protect the public lands from climate change. Bring your kids, um, your walking shoes, and your support for public lands, and they're going to go up Waterworks Hill around 4 p.m. today. Uh, UCCC, that's three C's, uh, Fall Festival. Um, a Carousel for Missoula is joining for their uh, a second annual Fall Festival at Carousel for Missoula. The event uh, funds their scholarship program, includes carousel rides, carnival games, pizza, and baked goods, and an amazing silent auction. Admission is free, and you pay as you go for the events. Uh, and you can see you then. Um, women's Comedy Happy Hour and Workshop. Tonight at 6 p.m., Badlander uh, for ladies and non-binary uh, folk, um, a place to talk about comedy and stand-up. Come to the Badlander on the last Wednesday of the month for an uh, hour of women talking with women about comedy. Bring new bits, unfold notes a uh, on napkins, try to your material, talk shop, brainstorm a, pr uh, a project, or just network with other, other funny women. They don't care if you've been doing stand-up for years or if you aren't 100% sure you want to pick up the mic at all. So this is an idea to engage in funny women to uh, come together and you know I'm a guy just talking about this. So um, this event is free and it happens right before the Revival Comedy Stand-Up Open Mic which is start starts at 7.30 p.m. This month at least three of the women in the group will be performing a couple for the first time and uh, and one of the best comics in town. Becky uh, Margolis, Margulis, sorry about that, is headlining. And that's kind of what's happening. A uh, Badlander is hosting a open mic for comedy from 7:30 to about nine, and then they go back to their karaoke night. Um, helping kids manage their emotions. Family's First Children's Museum is hosting a class at Ralph Snake Elementary School. How do you respond when your kid is having a tantrum, whining, or just being plain rude? In this free parenting class, get tips on anger management for kids and learn how to teach your kids skills that will last a lifetime. And there's free child care available. You can register online at MissoulaClasses.com or call for more information, which I have no idea where the number is. And um, this is, um, you can call Family's First Children's Museum for more information. Um, 3D Printing 101 Workshop in the Makerspace at the Missoula's Public Library. Missoula Public Library, Library has a 3D printer and they show you how to use it in this class that happens from 6.30 to 7.30 p.m. tonight. And they also have an intro into web design. So if you're interested in creating your own website, uh, this class goes from September 6th through the uh, 25th. Um, they meet every Wednesday night and is designed to provide students a general Good understanding on website design. This course focuses on the introduction of general web programming concepts of HTML and CSS in support of these goals. And this is a good uh, representation since a lot of jobs are going into computers as well. So if anybody is interested in learning a new skill or using this as a benefit to improve their resume, this is a great way to uh, do it as well. They also have an Excel class as well. Um, form, function, design, and mission. Missoula Public Library, um, they're doing a whole lot of stuff at the Missoula Public, Li Public Library. And one of the things that is, uh, is they're doing is a new way to library, form, function, design, and mission, which meets in the large meeting room. This program is hosted by the Missoula Public Library, Library Foundation, and All Under One Roof um, Capital Campaign. This is every Wednesday night from 7 to 8 p.m. And this is a way for people to connect with the Missoula Public Library and see how they want to move the library in the future. And that as well. So the last thing that's happening tonight whew, whew, is a poetry slam. So poetry slam, the slam is back with host Joy Haven and Jared Burkhart. Join your A game and compete with verbal prowess and be one of our own judges to make your own opinion known or just sit back and enjoy the show no matter how you slice it. These slams are always fun and unique evenings so don't miss it out. So don't miss out. Um, you can come early and sign up at the door and be prepared to reserve your reading slot ahead of time by contacting Lily at E3 Gallery at E3 Gallery Missoula dot com. This is an all age event but, s but please note that the poets are free to fully express themselves without censorship. Um, yeah so uh that's kind of what's happening tonight, Wednesday night. But I also have an art clip, which will be ending um, tomorrow as well. So this is the last time you guys will get to see this art clip on my show. But you still have another day to check out somewhere, nowhere, at the Clay Studio of Missoula. So um, here is the clip from that. And when I come back, we'll talk about Thursday events, and I'll wrap up the show.
Hey guys, welcome back. I want to thank uh, Rick Phillips for uh, providing such a wonderful art clip from the Clay Studio of Missoula. You guys still have today and tomorrow to check out that. But other than that, that's the last time you get to see that art clip. Um, let's see, what other clips do I have for you guys? I have no more clips for you guys. So let's talk about some Thursday events that are happening. The Montana Book Festival is beginning this week as well. They have an exhibition tour, um, Resort Museum, September 28th, and this is going to go on pretty much all week long. Um, Thursday night is also Whiskey and Pie, where they'll do a reading about whiskey and pie. And MCAT will be there, namely myself, will be there uh, watching people reading about uh, whiskey and pie. So Montana Book Festival um, is doing a museum at the Missoula Art Museum. Man, is proud of once again, with Montana uh, Book Festival, which takes place from September 27th through October 1st, um, Amor hosts readings, workshops, and discussions in the uh, Carnegie Gallery and classroom spaces. You can visit montanabookfestival.org for a festival schedule. Um, on the 28th at 10 a.m. this just morning, tour exhibits, um, uh, not this morning, but tomorrow morning, is uh, text-based artwork from the MAM collection with senior creator Bannon Reiches. Um, and then from 1 to five p 1 to 4 p.m. tomorrow afternoon, Textcraft is a group that meets monthly in advanced um, creative exploration in art and literature. Drop in, to make, drop in the makerspace in the Goldberg Family Library to work on interactive or solo art projects, repurposing found text from old books and magazines open to everybody. Plan to jet to, the p jet to Japan. If you're going to Japan, basically. Uh, teaching English in Japan. University of Montana Mansfield Center Brown Bag Lecture Series. Um, the Japan Exchange and Teaching, uh, which is called JET, program to uh, competitive employment opportunity that offers you a, ch a chance to live and work in Japan. Um, those selected will travel to Japan to work as either an assistant language teacher or a coordinator for the international relations as part of the larger JET community. Join us to learn more about uh, applications process as well as the salary benefits and support offered to JET teachers. So I think it's um, you get more out of the experience than you actually get out of the payment. I've had people who actually do this program and they say they love going to Japan, but I'll, I'll a lot of the times they didn't really learn too much from Japan as they uh, gave to Japan as well. So, um, but that's just them. I don't know. It's a case by case scenario. A, cl a classic literature in archives, University of Montana, celebrate the Montana Book Festival with the Mansfield Library from September 20th. Uh, um, 3.30 to 5 p.m. for a special presentation and tour of classic literary texts held by archives and special collections. This event will feature discussions by UM uh, professor uh, Ashby Kurt Kinch, um, Rob Browning, uh, Pajita Shema, and um, Elizabeth Hubble uh, about some of the library's rarest literary texts, which makes them classic. So one of the things that happened with the um, Mansfield Library is that a couple of years ago they had a very um, old book that was actually in circulation in terms of people would check out the books and then they found out that this book is rare and w pretty much one of ten books in existence of that per of that particular print so they basically took it out of that circulation and put it in their private library um, basically where you have to have um, um, tweezers to turn the pages. I'm not joking because it's it's pretty interesting how like a lot of these really old school books are really intense and just really protected as well. But also, um, I remember that they had like a fifth edition Shakespeare book that was uh, being shown at the uh, University of Montana Gallery of Visual Arts, which is at in the Montana. I think it was the Part TV building. Yes, it was in the Part TV building, and they had it was on part of the Shakespeare tour. It's one of the oldest books in existence. So the, um, one of the things about books is that since it's made of paper, it has a tendency to be more biodegradable. So that's kind of what's happening there. But this is a thing that's happening. They're going to look through a lot of the old books in the Mansfield Library's um, uh, section, where you need basically supervision to look at some of these old books at the Mansfield Library. Uh, leaning into change, living art multi-session, living art of Montana is learning in leaning into change with Odette Grassi, Tara Ostowski, uh, Bev Glukert, uh, Tracy uh, Pondorf, and Sikaki uh, Photography. Sorry, I'm like butchering these names. I'm just not having a good day with names, or some of these names are just way out of my um, capability of literature. Uh, so 4:30 to 6:30 p.m. Um, basically every Thursday until October 19th. Um, each of the lives is constantly changed, loss, uh, readjustment, a surprise, ends and beginnings. In the wor this workshop, they'll explore many aspects of change, the hard and the sweet. Workshops include writing, mixed media, assemblage, and portraitures. Um, this is in the Living Art of Montana at 4.30 p.m. every Thursday. Um, ladies Pottery Painting Night at Zootown Arts Community Center. Um, if you really like the projects that you see on Pinterest, 
Do you know that they have everything you need to make uh, such cute pottery projects? Ladies Pottery Night is a perfect night to try new painted pottery techniques. During this special event, all women are to receive 20% off pottery painted in our studios. All ages and experience levels are welcome to participate. No reservations are necessary. Simply come a on in and get creative. Um, day night in the Missoula and Insectarium. So um, one thing um, um, you should know about um, it. it interesting uh, dates to have at a Missoula Insectarium. So you drop your kids off with us in the Insectarium for a two-hour educational program. Then you get to spend those two hours however you please. You'll get to buy one and get one free coupon at the Dram Shop across the street. And they hire... Okay, so the idea is like they are basically taking your kids while you go on a date night. So my bad. When I see date night at the ins Missoula Insectarium, I'm thinking that people date at the Insectarium, but it's the other way around. It's more like you drop your kids off and do that. I'm learning as I'm reading. Trust me. So anyways, the drop-off window closes at 6.30 p.m. And this is ages for uh, 4 to 11. Welcome. Um, I must be potty trained. And registration at MissoulaButterflyHouse.org slash date night. And drop-ins are also welcome as well. But if you drop them at, at 6.30, they will be like, eh, mm, uh, this is awkward. Um, anyways, <laughs> that's kind of what's going on with that. Um, 2017 U of M Motor Board lec last lecture, University of Montana, the last lecture, how to be a white guy, a last lecture on um, punching Nazis, baking pies, and not being a douchebag. Um, and I can say that because it's in the um, title. Uh, given by Dr. Uh, Tobin Miller, uh, Shearer is a lecturer given as if it were Dr. Shearer's last. This event is free and open to the public, and it's at 7 p.m. tomorrow night. And it should be interesting uh, because... It just sounds interesting. <laughs> but here are some of your music events that are happening. Um, all the karaoke is happening at the Badlander, Sunrise Saloon, and at VFW tonight. Um, also, th for Thursday night, the Dodgy Mountain Men is going to be at the Top Hat Lounge. Um, r uh, r karaoke at the Dark Horse. Um, karaoke at VFW again. So a lot of karaoke happening. Jazz at Plonk as well. Um, Little Smokies, uh, Brothers, Comatose, and uh, Mipso is going to be at the Wilma on Thursday night as well. So a lot of things happening this week, especially the lot next two days. Um, it's crazy. Um, but also, I want to throw it back, and I want to thank um, Alicia Crandall and um, um, Kelly Moore from the Missoula Aging Services and the MSU Extension Offices talking about a diabetes class, um, education uh, class for people with diabetes or pre-diabetes, and it will be happening on Halloween, which is Tuesday, October 31st at 1 p.m. You guys can register at um, MissoulaAgingServices.org. Um, it's a great website for people who are um, promotes that helps promote the independence, dignity, and health of older adults and those who care for them. And I. Um, and I also wanted to mention that MCAT hosts a um, orientation every single Wednesday at 5.30 p.m. So if you're interested in coming to MCAT and learning about what MCAT is and what you can do with MCAT for MCAT and just uh, by using MCAT, you can call us at seven. Um, sorry, 542-6228. You can also email us MCAT at MCAT.org. But um, for Wake Up Missoula, I'm Dirty Dan. Thanks for joining me. Thank you.